Hey guys, here at Blade Show 2017 with Zach Fowler, otherwise known as Fowler, and uh, winner of Alone Season 3. And I really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk here with me. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. If you want to be notified when I post new Ultimate Survival Tips videos, make sure you're subscribed. Click the little bell icon below the video on your computer or mobile app. That way you won't miss out on any new Ultimate Survival Tips videos. Tell me a little bit about your experience with Alone. I'm sure you're, that's like so <laughs> yeah, general. Yeah. What was the best, okay, how about this? Best and worst. Best and worst? Uh, best was just being out there and making all the cool stuff that I got to make and just having an adventure. My dream my whole life has always been to just to be able to make whatever I want whenever I want to. And that situation gave me the opportunity to make what I needed to make to survive, but I also had a lot of fun with it. I made some really cool fish traps and some little duck hunter that paddled out into the water and did my fishing for me. I made, you know, all kinds of neat things and I just had so much fun with it. The worst part was missing the family though. Oh, yeah. You know, I have two daughters and a wife at home that, you know, I knew they were missing me. I had to leave them on the side of the road. I story stick here, the wizard staff, you can see the cars broke down on the side of the road. And, oh, right, right. And it's like yeah. I had to leave them on the side of the highway. and. It was just a hard way to go, you know. And that was in episode one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I left them. And you had to make a flight? Was yeah, I had to flight? make the flight to Patagonia. The wife jumps out with the baby and puts her thumb <laughs> out and was like, got me a ride to the airport. And it's like, I mean, they would have been 30 minutes later, she would have been dropping me off the same way. But it was it was so yeah. just heart wrenching to leave them and not be able to take care of my family. She seems like a, a great gal. Uh, Jamie is really amazing. Supportive. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it was, there's so much to it. 87 days, you know, I just, 63 fish, two birds, one with my slingshot. This is amazing. And that's the tassel from it. And You guys uh, can't get a perspective of the right. story stick here just, just, just on video, and, and that is amazing. I was running out of space towards the end there. <laughs> you know, right there. And you were running out of fat stores, too. 87 days, <laughs> I won. That's cool. So, and of course, the top of it is adorned with the fish head because the fish head was uh, how I stayed alive and how I stayed strong and I came out of it at the end feeling strong. I lost 73 pounds. I went in weighing 223, I was a little on the pudgy side and I just kept eating fish and it wasn't quite enough. It was like a half ration the whole time, but the fish head soup meant I had the minerals, electrolytes and things I needed. So I didn't come out weak. I was still feeling pretty cranked and I was like, I was ready. I was almost ready to protest. I was like, I want to go to a hundred at least, you know? And there, but my wife was there and she's like hugging me. She's like, you out stubborn them all. You've won. How does it feel to have a half a millionaire? And I'm like, I'm ready to go home. Sure, I, I was more happy to see her than I went realizing that I even won. So That's awesome! You did a great job. When yeah. I, uh, when the History Channel approached us to uh, help them get word about the show out, I don't know if you've seen that video, but I went through. I did an analysis of everybody's gear, and you were the one that struck out to me because you had what was it three unique items? Yeah, it was the, the slingshot, slingshot, the shovel, and the multi-tool. You you were like honed right in on that. Yeah. And that, and the fact that like the fourth thing that was weird was I didn't pick a ration. Everybody picked one ration, or, or, or some if if not two. And like I didn't bring a ration because I just didn't want to be without my tools. Yep. I just imagined eating that one ration and then being like, man, if I only had the slingshot, if I only I had the axe, one of those things. And I used every one of my tools and I wouldn't change it. If I go out again someday. You know, 10 years from now, winners take all, kind of, yeah. for a million. You know, I, I, there's no way I would, I would change, keep the same stuff. It'll be really interesting, and I think there's going to be another season, right? Yeah, there's a season coming on, season actually, coming on. in like a couple days here. The, okay. On the 15th, okay. coming right up. Yeah. So, it'll be interesting to see what your future contestants take, because I think you challenged the, the traditional, like the, the status quo mindset. On what gear? Yeah, I mean, I went into it. I was gonna homestead the situation, just like I do out in the woods in Maine. You know, I'm always uh, just making stuff to make our life better. You know, I never studied this stuff to become a survivalist. I wanted to be a homesteader, so I studied how to do primitive traps so I could catch the woodchuck that's eating my um, cabbage. You know, yep. and when I went out there, I took in the same aspect and the same mindset. And a lot of survivalists, they want to like not burn a lot of calories. And I wanted to make myself comfortable so I could stay longer, thinking that that was more important. And like you said in your video, it's like three of everything, the rule of three, if, and three months 
you know, that you get to the end of yourself and people were getting pulled because yep. they were losing so much body weight, their BMI was dangerously low. Yep. And, you know, it was like, the, and so. And you were close too, dude. I was, I was close. I probably, I did the calculations after I got back. My BMI was just at right normal. And if I had kept going, I probably would have had another 20 days, you know, if I had a lot of fish, okay. and like I was continuing to, I, I probably, 20 days, they probably would have been coming to get me too. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's hard. Yeah. It's a lot of work. <laughs> that was amazing, dude. It was amazing. I mean, you went the longest of anyone and you yep. were right up against that three months, that, that timeline. Yeah. yeah. But the thing that impressed me most about what you were, you just seemed like you were in your element and like almost like a kid in the candy store yeah yeah it felt a lot like home so it was like i got to do all the things i've dreamt of my whole life and you know drawing in my sketchbook things i didn't have time to do at home you know when i always had to do the necessities to keep us alive there because i mean living out in a yurt in the woods with my two daughters is, is a lot like what i did out there in patagonia you know except yep. i just had to do it for myself you know cutting firewood every day baiting my fish hooks and and keeping that fishing situation going until i could eat um and it was just fun. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that, that in the preview, I think it was episode one and all that, um, just tell the guys what's happened since then. Uh, did you recently build or uh, buy a home? Yeah, we um, we decided. That was like, I was like, I'm pulling for him because like, he's in a yurt, man. That's <laughs> one of the nice reasons why home. I could never even consider giving up because yeah. like we lived in a 12 foot yurt, you know, and we lived on the land. We wanted to build a house out there. And in the end, after we found out, it just like there was too much logistics to be able to build out there, and the family needed a place. If I'm to have another adventure someday soon, right. then uh, so we ended up buying a mansion, or at least it feels like a mansion compared to our 12-foot <laughs> yurt. It's, it's a, a giant old farmhouse. It's a main mansion, you know. Uh, yeah, it was it was a main mansion for sure. And I got yeah. a big barn and my studio, so I can edit. I'll be doing YouTube now, and we've been doing a vlog about that. You can see on my YouTube channel, Fowler's Makery and Mischief. I love the shirt. And we got T-shirts on our website, Fowler's Makery and Mischief dot com, with wow. the same thing. And uh, we're just going to be keeping the adventure going and be able to share it with everybody through the vlog and through a um, new survival series as, as if I did it in Maine. The, all that I did in Patagonia, redoing it, I'll be talking about that, what resources I would use different in Maine, and what I have learned since then. You know, there are people that fished out there in a different way and caught a lot of fish. So if I go back out again, I'm going to combine some of these newer things I've learned about fishing with what I already knew. And I think I'm going to make a, a whole lot more food for myself next time. That's awesome. You know? so. Dude, well, thank you so much for taking the time here yeah blessings to you and you and your family and dude if there's anything i can do to support what you're doing just let us know yeah and thanks again thank you hey guys if you enjoyed this video i've queued up two more to the side that i think you'll like plus you can subscribe to this channel below and buzz over to our website for a ton of free resources on survival bushcraft bugging out and prepping and for links to the gear shown in this video see the video description on youtube Okay guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.